In this video, we're going to be looking at a feature and level survey. Uh, other words to describe a feature and level survey or common terms often used are existing condition survey or a detail survey or a feature survey. Uh, essentially, they're all the same thing, just different words to describe it. And what a feature survey is, is basically creating a 3D model and a map, uh, which can be used for anything, uh, maybe even uh, designing for buildings or uh, to help with volume calculations or anything like that. Uh, so the feature survey is you'll have a site area and a surveyor will survey this area by measuring points along the surface. Uh, the first thing to do is to create a 3D model. So part of doing that is picking up shots at certain intervals or measuring points at certain intervals to uh, these three these points are 3d points so there's an x1 a z or an east northing rl and each of these points can then be triangulated together to create a surface and from that you can then generate contours or uh, the 3d models from it um, um, things in within a feature survey are the features themselves so um, anything that's on the site the surveyor will measure as well that are features and they will be coded or on the legend shown as features so an example we have here is just a quick feature and level of a particular site this is on a house block and what we have are uh, contours along the whole site that have been surveyed. Uh, so this is a plan that's made from a feature and level survey. Uh, you don't actually see it on this part, but they're actually measurements the survey has taken at certain intervals along this site to create these contours or the 3D model, as well as the features on here as well. So you'll see this fencing here, there are actually small crosses along it and that's what the surveyor has measured to then create or draw these lines in to be the fence. Same thing with uh, these power lines or the sheds or the water tanks and taps, uh, any significant features on the track including uh, gravel roads or gravel tracks and creeks or anything that surveyors measured on site. Uh, what we've got on this plan too is an aerial image which is referenced in behind the survey too. This is done by one of our drones to uh, do photogrammetry to create a, a 2D uh, aerial image kind of like Google Earth but a, a much higher resolution and it's geo-referenced onto this site. So what we've done here is and just some uh, what we call ground control points to use as basically scaling this image to fit it onto the site and be uh, accurate and geometrically accurate as well as fitting onto our, our survey. So uh, the image itself is corrected for any distortion in the photos taken too. So it's an accurate aerial image behind it and all the features surveyed are by a traditional method, which uh, was done by our total station. And it's basically what it does is set up the total station at a known point and you will then measure an angle and a distance to a pole that the surveyor is holding and measures that point. So angle and distance to find a, a 3D point, X, Y, and Z. And that's what these little crosses are. Uh, they're all surveyed points measured with the total station. And then from that, we use our computer software uh, to create these 3D models and plans. And this plan itself too, uh, this is a typical plan that we've got. And as most plans have, they've got their legend, notations, titles, and all the other uh, scale information where it was referenced from, usually a company logo and some information about um, underground 
communications on this plan, but other services as well. And basically just all the features and levels on this site, um, which is all collated together uh, to be shown on a plan. And as well as another format we often send uh, an AutoCAD or a, a computer-aided design package uh, format that can be viewable on computers. So you can basically see this site on a computer and then that helps, uh, for example, engineers to design on this site, maybe where a house is going to go and the amount of material or earth moving that may be required and um, making sure that no services are being obstructed during the construction or anything like that. Um, feature surveys are often uh, used for many different things, but uh, they often help with the, the planning of future projects. And uh, another thing that might be helpful for this is uh, a feature subdivision where uh, the boundaries may be subdivided up into more boundaries and this also helps with the designing part or understanding what the, the land on site looks like and um, the boundaries can be subdivided to better reflect the land on site. So another thing I didn't explain was uh, the black dark thicker lines here uh, the title boundaries or the property boundaries and uh, they aren't always shown on feature surveys or feature and level surveys um, but yeah often they are and uh, surveyors often have to break into when planning to do feature surveys uh, there's two different components so there's the feature and level survey component and there's the title re-establishment component, so that's determining where the property boundaries are. Often they're two different steps that um, can be simultaneously done on site, but it is two different ways of thinking for the surveyor and yeah, two different, usually two different approaches to establish these titles, particularly in areas similar to this one where the title boundaries are quite old and uh, we often use survey marks to determine where these boundaries are and in older areas survey marks don't often exist so it can become a lot more complicated to determine where these tidal boundaries are. Uh, so that's another component with feature and level surveys that uh, surveyors have to consider in when they're creating these plans or these maps and models. I explained before that uh, this survey plan was done by a tail station as well as the aerial image was done by a UAV. Other survey methods can include by GPS or GNSS, which uh, essentially does the same thing as a tail station. You measure points on the site. Uh, it records the X, Y and Z values or the east and northern RL values. And you can basically replicate this site, um, but GNSS uh, doesn't um, do well when you're close to obstructions like trees or buildings or anything. So for this site in particular, we wouldn't have used GPS just because there are so many large trees and we would get inaccurate results. But uh, using GPS is another way to do feature surveys as well. Uh, other ways we can do it, we can actually use UAVs to create 3D models of sites. Uh, they're often, uh, there's two ways you can do this, by photogrammetry or LiDAR. Um, depending on the site itself, uh, is more dependent on which method you would go to do it. And uh, particularly on the larger sites, we see more efficiencies with using uh, drones or UAVs to do these surveys. But in the smaller areas like this, the efficiencies, we often just go back to tail station or GNSS observations. Uh, other ways we can do it are 3D laser scanning. Uh, what this is, 
Similar to a total station, you set it up on a tripod and it scans or measures millions of points every second to create what we call as a 3D point cloud. And this is just measuring everything it sees and uh, it measures billions of points and all these points come together as basically a 3D model. And then we can generate the exact same thing as this feature survey where we've got contours and features and services and everything else in it as well. Uh, another way that we can survey it is using a boat or we can do sub um, surface measurements as well as using bathymetry underneath water, measuring and modeling uh, beneath the water. And there are many different other forms of measurement too, but these are the more common ones for land surveyors. Uh, the last thing to go over is the different types of outputs that we can do. Uh, commonly surveyors do a PDF output, which is a digital paper copy. Basically you can print it and it looks like this and it can be viewed on your computer, very similar to this plan here. And a, a computer-aided design a CAD package, and often this is in a DWG format or a DGN format or many different types of formats, depending on the software that the end user uh, needs it to be. Uh, we can output these in many different types. And if you have a specific type that you want the output to be, uh, we can cater for this as well. Otherwise, yeah, the um, different feature surveys, uh, we can, uh, particularly with using 3D laser scanning or UAVs uh, have different types of outputs which include hosting this 3D model uh, on the web. So we can send a URL of or a link to a client. They can click on it and view their site, the 3D model of the site on their computer and scroll around and uh, interrogate and uh, measure distances or points or add notes or anything like that. Um, and we can also host the point cloud on the web as well. So uh, the point cloud is a little bit more data intense and it's visually, it doesn't look quite as uh, nice as the 3D mesh. Uh, it's a bit easier to view and scroll around, but the 3D point cloud is often what we use to help with our 3D modeling and the feature and level surveys, but the mesh itself is a lot more visually appealing and it gives you a better appreciation of the site and how it looks. Uh, so they're two different formats that we can host on the web and just provide a URL link for the clients, as well as uh, other different formats too, specific to different softwares. So if you have a, a software format that you need us to provide you the data with, we can do that as well. Uh, there's many different options that we can do. So uh, yeah, thanks for tuning in. And if you have any questions about feature and level servers or how they're done or anything to do with software, uh, please send through a message and I'll be sure to help. Cheers.